some bebop scales, some licks that I'm only using one scale against this rockabilly blues progression, and that's the C dominant bebop scale, the dominant seventh bebop scale. Now, a thing about bebop scale, they're oversimplified. It's kind of like telling about a blues scale. Yeah, flat the three and you know, here's the blues scale. I did it. For years and years and years, I played the blues scale. And be when I went to thoroughly teach it, I re realized I really didn't know it very well. The same is true with the bebop scales, at least for me. Just knowing about them and playing them a little bit doesn't do it. You've got to learn some music within the scale so you can get some music out of it. So you got to learn licks, you got to learn some solos with just using that scale. Now when I just isolate myself to one scale against the chord progression, I get a certain sound. And that is this bebop uh, dominant seventh blues scale. And I get that rockabilly sound. If I just isolate that and don't use anything else, and there's a very big temptation to use other things, and uh, but I'm sorry, I'm trying to force myself not to do that. So the other thing about bebop scales, I find that in looking around at them, they're mislabeled on a lot of them. There's like a two different Dorian bebop scales. You know, I find that the labeling of the scales, I, I don't agree with a lot of these things. So what I want to do with my students is solidify some of these names so at least we can talk about the scales and uh, intelligently and uh, then use them. So that's an important thing. Now in this lesson we're going to work on 12 bebop licks and again the, the key to learning licks is you learn them 
You memorize them, you get them into your system, then you reorganize them into your own thing. You use bits and pieces of them, and uh, you can even do that, and that's basically what I was doing this whole time in the soloing of this. It's you're just reorganizing some of the licks that you already know how to play. Um, now the bebop scale, again, is oversimplified by saying it's, you know, it's eight notes. We're sticking a half step between one of the whole steps of a major scale or a minor scale or whatever. And that's true. And that's well and good. But again, until we learn music within the scale, it, it, it just sounds like a scale. And that brings me to another point. A lot of educators like to say, you know, the good thing about a bebop blue scale is that the downbeat, as you play it, every uh, chord tone is on a downbeat. One and two and three and four and one. So the one, three, five, flat seven are on the downbeats. Well, that's all well and wonderful, but who plays a scale like that? Who plays a solo like this? You know, it, we, you know, we don't do that. You want to make, be able to play some music with it. idea so let's learn these licks get the PDF download the track and uh, we'll have some fun with this and then we're going to get into a whole series of lessons on the bebop scale so uh, I hope you get this first one and continue with me throughout this series okay here we go with some close-ups <laughs> 